Hi, my name is Sophia Serrano. I am a PhD student in NLP working with Noah Smith. Uh, my research interests broadly revolve around interpretability and explainability, um, but the project that I'm going to be talking uh, to you today about is a little bit different. Um, so let me see if I can share my screen. Okay, here we go. Um, so this is uh, ongoing work uh, that I'm doing with Elizabeth Clark, Tall August, and Nikita Hadong, um, all also in Noah's group. Uh, on uh, evaluating human evaluation of generated text coherence. Uh, so to motivate this a little bit, um, in NLP we have this task called natural language generation where we ask models to generate natural language text. Um, and when we want to check how much progress we've made uh, in this task, we typically set up an evaluation that goes something like this. Uh, we have some underlying textual context, so some block of text uh, that we then provide to two different models, one of which is our proposed new model uh, and one of which is a baseline model, um, so some pre-existing model usually. Uh, and this gets us two generated texts, um, which we can then give to a human judge uh, or to a set of human judges and ask which of these is better. Um, uh, given the preceding context. Better can get a lot more specific, um, but for the purposes of explaining the task, we'll leave it at that. Uh, and so the question that we're asking in this work is, how well can people actually evaluate NLG models quality for a single dimension of text quality? So in order to look at this question, we're going to need some sort of ground truth. Um, and so, uh, we're going to select uh, textual coherence as um, the dimension of text that we're evaluating um, because there's a really nice computational uh, proxy for it. So textual coherence broadly refers to how much sense does this generated text make given the text that came before it. And so we're going to computationally approximate that by varying the amount of context that the model actually has access to. So to be more specific, uh, we have one single underlying text generation model, in our case, a fine-tuned version of GPT-2 on rock stories, which are just five sentence common sense stories. Uh, and we're then going to provide exactly the same input to it twice with just one difference. And that single difference is uh, the rate at which pieces of that text are replaced with an uninformative mask token. Uh, so uh, the higher masking rate uh, always masks uh, the lower masking rates, um, mask tokens, and just builds on those. So we can guarantee that at least as much information is screened out. Uh, and this gets us a better model or like a better generated text and a worse generated text. So better being had more information. We did this for a bunch of uh, mask rate pairings in order to analyze different uh, aspects of what might make people more or less accurate in their judgments. Uh, and so finally for our experiment design, we asked Turkers to uh, uh, read the story context, the unmasked story context, choose which of two generated texts best continues the story, rate how much better their choice was, and explain their choice. Um, and so some preliminary results here are that we do see, encouragingly, that people make correct judgments about 60% of the time, which was above random chance for us, so that would have been 50%. But looking more carefully, pretty much all of that being above random chance is contributed by uh, generation pairs where there was a large difference, so about a 50% difference uh, in the underlying mass rate. Um, uh, for a small difference, which consisted of about a 10% difference, um, there was actually uh, barely any difference at all. In fact, people are sitting pretty much at random chance uh, in their judgments, which is concerning because these days we do actually have very strong baselines for natural language generation models, which means that typically in a lot of evaluations, progress is likely to be incremental which might fall more into that small difference category, which could have implications for our evaluations. 
So for some future directions uh, for this project, because we're still not done with it, uh, we plan to examine inter-annotator agreement on these judgments and factor in participants' self-reported certainty. And then beyond this project, uh, we want to continue examining how well people can assess other dimensions of text quality and provide some advice for NLG researchers collecting these evaluations, um, either on coherence or in general. Thanks.